Well, welcome everyone this after Friday afternoon. Uh, my part of the segment is called Trends in Manure Sample Data. Quick overview about what I'll be talking about. Uh, one of our projects is that we worked with several laboratories to acquire some recent manure nutrient data. And then we compared that to Midwest Plan Service and American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers book manure nutrient values and identified some general nutrient trends comparing those items. We'll also touch on preparations for our development of a nationwide manure nutrient database, manure DB, and ideas on what we'll have to work on to make manure DB useful and user-friendly as we go forward. So this audience especially knows about manure. Um, it's, it's a variable product, but it's a, also a essential plant nutrient. But like commercial fertilizers, we also have to be cautious um, about losing it to the environment too. But anyway, what are manure book values as a reference even used for in the first place? Why are we even looking at this? Um, they are used for developing manure management plans, especially for new livestock facilities that don't have any um, manure to sample yet. So they can kind of plan ahead how much, how much land will they need in their manure management plan going forward. It will also possibly be used for designing manure storages, um, establishing best management practices for land application of that manure, and then also uh, for modeling nutrient cycling and gas emissions. So quite a few different array of uses that these values are used for. And as mentioned, the two common nutrient values, if you were to try to look them up, are come from manure characteristics published by Midwest Plant Service and wrote as MWPS, abbreviated there. And that was published back in 2004. And then also the Manure Production and Characteristics Standard uh, by the American Society of Agricultural Biological Engineers, ASABE. And that was published back in 2005. And just to put a clip of where this ASABE manure data came from, just looking here at some of the swine data, you can see they had some you know, 24 samples and 200 and some samples from 1999 and 2000. So some, you can see all, some of this data is already over uh, 20 years old and kind of the number of samples or which part of the country they may have come from. In this project, we partnered with five laboratories and through that received over 127,000 manure nutrient samples. Uh, they came from between 2012 and 2021, so within the last 10 years. We're able to divide this data in between liquid and solid samples and then divide into four main animal groups, beef, dairy, poultry, and swine. And then as you can imagine, different laboratories report things differently, name things differently. Um, we put all these lab results and book values um, into pounds of nutrient per ton for solid manure or pounds of nutrient per 1,000 gallons for liquid manure. So we're all comparing similar numbers. And then we calculated the medians for total nitrogen, ammonium nitrogen, P2O5 for phosphorus, and K2O for potassium. And chose the median just to avoid skewness by choosing that value. And through these, we have no differentiations for housing, manure storage, and age for the majority of those samples. So those are some comparisons we will not be able to make with this data set. So we're just going to look over some just very general trends we found um, here first through look for liquid manure and kind of just looked overall for what we could see compared to the standard through these five labs. You know, what could we see? Is there some, are they trending higher? Are they trending lower? Could we not quite tell, you know, the change is variable between. Uh, it seems for swine, it seems like we couldn't really tell much on the nitrogen side, but it seems like the phosphorus side of things was decreasing and the potassium side of things was increasing. On the dairy side, it looked like the total nitrogen and phosphorus were trending a little lower. Uh, for beef, we couldn't really identify a trend there. 
for poultry on the ammonium side, we saw an in increase, trending increase, and for potassium, an increase, but for the phosphorus side, it was trending lower. And we'll look at a few highlighted examples of these in the next few slides. So for dairy liquid nitrogen here at the Midwest Plant Service, they had four different categories with their pounds of total N per thousand gallons manure. Here's the ASA BE numbers. Here's the averages of our three Midwest labs within the Midwest US and our one Eastern US lab, what their numbers were. So for these, for these Midwest Plan Service, they range between 27 and 32 pounds of total N per thousand gallons, which here 20 and 24 were all lower than those numbers. And they ABSB, ASABE, they're all lower than the dairy slurry besides the lagoon effluent. So again, we don't have those really differentiations, but for overall, it did seem to be trending lower. So that's how we looked at it. So a similar chart here for dairy liquid phosphorus and the Midwest Plan Service ranged 14 and 15 and both for our lab numbers were at nine. So they were all trending lower besides the separated dairy lagoon effluent number that ASABE had. So. For our poultry liquid phosphorus, uh, they ranged from Midwest Plan Service, had a range uh, from 35 to 52, and our three Midwestern labs had an average of 29, so that was trendy lower in that case. And for the liquid potassium, we had, this was just a little bit higher, it ranged from 29 to 33, and the average, or the median, excuse me, was 35, so we saw a trend higher there. Now moving over to solid manure, similar chart here. We saw with solid manure that swine saw a trending increase in total nitrogen, P205 and K2O. Um, dairy saw a trending increase for that potassium area. Beef saw a trending increase for total N, phosphorus and potassium, and trending lower for ammonium. And poultry saw an increase in total N, trending increase for potassium. We'll look, look at a few highlighted examples here next. For swine solid phosphorus, they ranged here in Midwest Plan Service between six and nine pounds of P205 per ton of manure. And our three Midwestern labs had an average of 18 and our one Eastern US lab had an average of 20. So those were all quite a bit higher that we could see since they were published. Swine solid potassium, Midwest Plan Service had between four and five, and our medians with the Midwest lab and Eastern lab were seven and nine. They're both a little bit higher in the potassium area. For poultry solid nitrogen, uh, we had a range here for Midwest Plan Service between 34 and 48 for all the different varieties of poultry. And uh, ASABE had between 37 and 75. So we had our Midwestern lab, three Midwestern labs had 53, and the Eastern lab had 52 for their median. So those were all higher than Midwest Plan Service had. Everything besides this probably boiler litter. So that was the only big difference in this category. Poultry solid potassium. We had Midwest Plan Service. It ranged between 26 and 36 pounds of K2O per ton of manure. And ASABE had between 27 and 33 pounds of K2O per ton. In our medians, we had three Midwestern labs with 37, and the one Eastern lab was 40, which were all higher than those values, um, book values published. So a few things we've learned through this is that while these samples had minimal descriptions beyond the species or type of animal, and we didn't know what, what kind of manure storage structure for the most part were used. And we do know that the age, nutrition, housing, manure handling and storage, you know, all do affect these nutrient levels. 
So having more detail would definitely help um, make more specific book values in the future. And we know, you know, having our data incoming, having to standardize, you know, what lab methods, units, terminology are used will be important so we can make accurate comparisons between them as we can start creating our MINER database, MINER DB, and increase the number of laboratories we work with. So our future plans with this project, that is planning to standardize the fields for some, what we can, at least for what, what samples have for them and are available, creating a unit conversion mechanism for when we have data upload. Um, Dr. Melissa Wilson will touch on this more in her presentation as she discusses more in depth about manure DB, and how we're planning to try to recruit more laboratories to participate in this project. And then we'll keep comparing and analyzing more data, you know, especially we're looking forward to having more detailed data for each animal type going forward. And in the future, plan to design Minter DB with statistical and data visualization features for our future public use. So just to summarize this presentation, our preliminary data that we received from five laboratories did show some changes from published manure book values. And we know detailed metadata will be really important for us to make robust comparisons going forward. And that our Minera DB Minera database project construction is underway. Additional information, like I said, stay tuned for Dr. Melissa Wilson's presentation coming up. Uh, you can email me or follow me on Twitter if you are interested. I would like to acknowledge the other authors on this, Dr. Melissa Wilson and Dr. Aaron Cordes on this presentation today. So Dr. Kevin Yanni, Extension Engineer, University of Minnesota, Larry Gunderson at the Minnesota Department of Agriculture, Tom Prather, and Dr. Kevin Silverstein at the Minnesota Supercomputing Institute, along with all of our other funding partners as well. So thank you very much.